Hello, everybody. Uh, Michael Silbury here. Um, today joined uh, by Kumar Patasetti, um, who's a partner at Deloitte. I'm really honored to have him. He is the head of uh, New Energy for Deloitte Australia and is a strategic advisor in the energy and resources sector. His expertise includes market modeling, uh, demand and energy price forecasts, portfolio analysis, market disruption, unregulated revenue growth, commercial and financial analysis, policy advice, risk management, strategic positioning, and assisting clients uh, with growth strategies. Um, welcome, Kumar. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, it's our pleasure to have you. Hey, I'd like to begin this discussion um, uh, uh, by uh, asking you to, well, you and I have discussed this, but what do you think the, the questions that executives should be asking themselves, um, uh, I mean, what are the questions they should be asking themselves in this, this day and age? Um, sure. Um, look, I think um, uh, they've started uh, asking um, uh, questions when, um, we were uh, presented with this um, COVID situation. Um, the first response was to ask questions about um, uh, how to look after their uh, employees and uh, how to uh, uh, focus the businesses um, uh, towards the bottom line. So I think uh, those were the questions that uh, people uh, and uh, execs were asking. And I think those questions were appropriate at the time. But now I'm seeing more and more uh, people are asking um, uh, questions about uh, growth and um, uh, how do we um, take advantage of the op opportunities that are being presented. Um, questions like, um, and as some, some uh, execs are um, uh, still asking questions like, how do we defend our market share? How do we defend our revenue? I think they're not uh, very empowering questions to ask. Uh, particularly in an environment where there are so many more um, growth opportunities that are present. More uh, importantly, if they ask questions like, what problems are we going to solve in the market that is changing at a lightning speed? Or how will we help our customers solve their problems? Or what social license do we need to play in the vast and expanding field called decarbonized economy? So those sort of uh, questions are more empowering of our feel, uh, and that will uh, encourage um, you know, participation from um, the employees to come together and start innovating. I'm happy to share um, a picture Oh, that'd be uh, great. From uh, International Energy Agency, um, and then uh, we can uh, further develop some of the um, uh, questions um, that um, we could ask. Yeah, so this is um, a, a picture from, um, it's a Sankey diagram from um, uh, International Energy Agency focused on a final consumption uh, in Australia. It, um, goes through um, the final consumption from 1975 onwards. It'll take um, just uh, 20 or so seconds. Just have a look. So this is over time how our uh, energy consumption changed. So you can see that uh, at here, um, we've got a total production, uh, total energy consumption of uh, 3,500 PJ. Um, and um, only 760 PJs are electricity. So we all know electricity is a super fuel. And this super fuel is getting match fit by decarbonizing itself much faster than any other fuel. Now, this match fit fuel, looking and standing in a decarbonized economy, looking at what am I going to do? What bit am I going to take over? How fast will I take over? Is a scary thought. From 22% of uh, 3,500 PJs, if it wants to grow, it can easily grow in the transport sector. We all know that transport sector is getting disrupted with electric vehicles. And even if it takes 50% of the transport sector, electricity sector can double itself. So that is a scary thought. 
Mm -hmm. And in an environment of doubling electricity sector, what should the execs be thinking about when it comes to taking advantage of the growth? So what part would I play in this, um, in this growth? Where do I uh, position myself to take advantage of this growth in the next 20 years or so? So there are lots of interesting questions that executives should be asking themselves to empower themselves as well as motivate um, their employees. So am I understand uh, you to be saying that the executives generally aren't asking the correct questions? Yeah, that's... Um, uh, Look, I think um, yeah, different different um, uh, execs are asking different questions, but here's a guide, right? So looking ahead um, in the next twenty years, um, these are some of the questions they should be asking. Yeah, wh where do we grow? Uh, what what uh, problems are we likely to solve? What 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 are the biggest problems that are um, uh, facing um, uh, the economy? We could see that um, you know, there are uh, some businesses, like um, recently saw um, a, a large investment bank partnering with um, uh, a technical energy um, uh, provide, uh, solution provider to help um, with the uh, growth in decarbonizing. So they are going to help um, corporations to decarbonize um, their uh, 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 energy consumption. So those, those sort of uh, partnerships um, uh, opportunities will open up if execs ask right questions. So, so uh, following from that, uh, what we, from your perspective uh, and a top line view, what are the three or four major trends uh, occurring in the, um, in the electricity market in particular? So I think um, uh, decarbonization is uh, a trend that we've seen in the last um, uh, three or so years, um, for the last three or uh, four years, and we think it'll continue uh, to grow. More and more, um, more and more corporations are um, uh, continuing to um, uh, decarbonize their operations, including energy procurement. We did see uh, recently uh, BHP made an announcement that they have secured a renewable energy contract for uh, the uh, for the long term. Uh, you will see more of these uh, announcements coming in. We've also seen state governments uh, committing for varying um, targets to reduce their emissions. Um, uh, we're also uh, seeing uh, a bit of M and A activity in the uh, offsets market, which is a leading indicator of decarbonization. So decarbonization will continue uh, and probably um, speed up in the um, uh, short to medium term. Uh, decentralization, uh, once again, we've seen uh, rooftop solar uh, 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 growth increasing. Um, I was just looking up um, uh, the uh, trend in New South Wales. In the last three years, uh, rooftop solar generation went up 25% year on year. Mm -hmm and we think uh, that will continue to grow uh, across uh, Australia. Um, uh, we also are likely to see distributed uh, batteries and demand side response to continue. So decentralization will continue and accelerate. Uh, digitization uh, will uh, have to uh, start um, ramping up because decarbonization and decentralization uh, requires digitization as a backbone to grow. Uh, digitization includes um, um, uh, the um, uh, virtual power plant and demand side response. All that uh, needs to happen. Uh, for that to happen, uh, digitization need to uh, uh, continue to grow. And to, uh, to encourage or to enable decarbonization, decentralization and digitization, we need infrastructure, which, is, which I'm calling enabling infrastructure. To balance all these and a smooth transition to happen, we need investment in enabling infrastructure, which includes uh, transmission, pumped hydro, batteries, and gas peakers. So four trends in, in total, decarbonization, decentralization, digitization. They're the three Ds and enabling infrastructure 
to support all the three Ds to grow. So kind of circling back to um, decarbonization, um, how do you see the energy mix um, in Australia, say five years, 10 years down the road? Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we think uh, um, uh, energy mix will um, uh, continue um, what, we are seeing, what we've seen in the last three uh, to five years, more uh, wind, more um, uh, solar, more rooftop solar. Um, rooftop solar uh, growth that we've seen in the domestic sector, uh, it is also making a lot of sense for um, uh, uh, industrial and commercials to have um, rooftop, uh, rooftop solar. Uh, so uh, renewable energy uh, will continue to grow. Um, gas power generation, pumped hydro and batteries, uh, unlikely to see major change in, uh, uh, in the production of these uh, technologies because pumped hydro does require a bit of, um, uh, a bit of a, um, uh, time um, to uh, develop. Uh, the, the fastest pumped hydro we've seen uh, 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 in the international market took five years. So your question is, uh, what's the energy mix for the next five years? Uh, change in energy mix in the next five years. Um, so it will take a bit of time. Uh, and then any major shift in, uh, uh, in the electricity or energy mix is sensitive to the closure of large coal-fired power stations throughout the name. Uh, currently, um, uh, closures, coal-fired power stations are uh, uh, expected to close between uh, late 2020s uh, into early 2030s. So um, what are your thoughts about the role of hydrogen? in the um, in the transition and the energy mix yeah so hydrogen has got a, um, a great um, uh, potential uh, to be an important farming technology uh, in uh, in the name uh, we did uh, do a bit of work um, a couple of years ago uh, for alan finkel looking at um, you know we made an assumption that uh, just picked victoria as a, a test case and we said, can uh, uh, we supply pure uh, renewables um, uh, with battery in Victoria? Um, uh, so uh, there is a continuous solar and wind drought uh, of 172 hours in Victoria, uh, which meant that uh, to support um, uh, just the demand during uh, the drought, uh, solar and wind drought, you need 172 hours of backup battery. At this time, uh, 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 with the cost of battery, it is a bit difficult for us to provide that kind of um, support just with, um, uh, with battery. And that's when uh, you, uh, you need support for gas and um, uh, uh, you know, to decarbonize gas, you need hydrogen. So as a firming technology into the future, hydrogen has got a good potential. Uh, and also it, uh, it does create uh, flexible demand uh, because you can produce hydrogen uh, when, the, uh, when there is excess energy that's getting generated and it can potentially provide uh, network support um, uh, in, into the future. But the challenge for hydrogen is um, uh, in the electricity sector is how do you physically produce, how do you store, how do you transport hydrogen in a manner that's safe and flexible. How about cost as it relates to hydrogen? Yeah, so uh, uh, that's a very important question. So uh, the costs do need to come down, but because of the role that is, it's playing with firming, um, so if you look at uh, firming technologies that are currently available, uh, gas is providing uh, firming, how important uh, is um, uh, the cost of um, gas or cost of hydrogen? So it, it, in providing the firming technology, currently um, uh, gas um, firming is offered at around between $70 and $110. So um, uh, hydrogen can provide that kind of firming at, at that price, but definitely everyone is working towards reducing the costs. And um, you know, when, when the costs do come down, it can become quite competitive. So um, my final question uh, relates to the COVID pandemic. Has, have you seen any uh, structural changes or, or will there be any structural changes in the industry because of the COVID um, uh, crisis? 
Yeah, uh, I think that's a that's a, a good question. So uh, what we've seen um, uh, during COVID is obviously um, demand in um, uh, in the um, uh, CNI uh, customer segment, but we did uh, we did notice uh, increase in demand for um, uh, domestic use. Um, so that uh, is during COVID, that's what uh, we've seen. And then um, the other thing we are seeing is the uh, increased uh, number of customers are entering into hardship program uh, uh, that includes um, uh, some of the commercial customers as well. Um, this could uh, have some impact on the financial viability of um, uh, some of the retailers and the bad debts continue to be significant risk for retailers. So that's, that's what we've, we've seen in the short term. In the long term, um, we do think that growth in um, uh, working from home will continue, uh, probably not as much as what we're seeing, but um, it does mean that there'll be growth in uh, domestic uh, demand. Um, and um, uh, there is a huge opportunity for um, uh, the response that we are seeing with the government providing more stimulus packages. Um, there's, uh, we will see more um, uh, encouragement to uh, decarbonization and also there is an opportunity for, um, uh, for our economy to uh, converge. Uh, there could be um, a speeding up of convergence between a transport and electricity sector. That's great. Uh, Kumar, listen, I wanted to thank you for your time uh, and looking forward to seeing you as the moderator of our CEO panel at our event in March uh, next year, March 10th and 11th next year in Melbourne. Uh, it's going to be a lively panel, particularly with you as the moderator. So again, uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure participating we'll, in this. We'll talk to you soon. See you then. Bye, Mike.